In this video, we're going to see how to do a code review in GitHub. Now, why code review? Code review is a good learning experience for both parties. Keep in mind, in our field, things change very frequently, and a lot of times the best approach at one time might not be the best approach later. So it's important that we learn from each other. We learn from each other's experience when we do a code review. The person getting reviewed learns a different perspective, and the person doing the reviewing might encounter some new things that he or she hasn't seen before. The other thing is we want to code review frequently. It's part of our definition of done. And the reason is quality. Code reviews can help us to find gaps in our logic, gaps in our code, or potential problems that might happen. And if you remember our conversation on technical debt, one, one concept or one part of technical debt is when you have a code base that is poor quality, or is incomplete, and you continue to invest in this by continuing to uh, write more code on top of bad code. Uh, so without code reviews, we're going to have a lot more technical debt. Now, the steps for a code review. First of all, anyone who's doing a code review should be a contributor in your project. So you'll need to set them up early as a contributor. After that, the person doing the code review should create a branch. In our case, I'm recommending that the branch is going to be your Bearcat ID, that's your 6 plus 2, uh, and then dash code review that follows that. Now, in Eclipse, and you can do this on the VM if you wish, don't have to, but you certainly can, you clone and select the branch that you've created. Now, here's the important part. Traditional code reviews have been kind of like a write-up where you just say, hey, I think you should change this. I think you need to add more comments. It looks like you have a checked exception that isn't handled well. The nice thing about doing a code review in GitHub is that you don't have to do that as a separate document or a separate concept. You make the changes directly in your branch. And because it's a branch, it's not going to affect the main branch. Then commit and push your changes back up to the original repository. Then we'll create a pull request, and then if needed, we'll comment. Uh, a pull request is something that happens in GitHub, and that is where you say, I have two branches that I would like to merge together. But the nice thing is that gives us an opportunity to go in and add comments to that pull request. And when I grade code reviews, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and, and add comments and say I agree with this, or maybe I don't agree with this, or maybe take a different approach. Now, uh, the value of doing this all in, code in uh, GitHub, another benefit is if the team getting reviewed likes your changes, they can merge them. Uh, and so they kind, of get, they kind of get an extra set of hands making the project better, and they get that for free. So I'm going to start with uh, the one moment please I'm going to start with an application where I have uh, I have I'm a contributor and that is doctor appointment and let's take a look at what we need to do here so I'm going to click on main and I am going to go to settings from settings there's an option here called collaborators uh, okay, I'll go ahead and confirm my username and password. And in collaborators, I can choose to add new collaborators. Now we see there's team owners. I click on this, and from here I could simply use a Bearcat ID. So I could type in uh, any Bearcat ID. Uh, we could, I could just, you see it auto-completes nicely for me. So I'm not actually going to add this one because this is not my project. But this is the step one. This is where you're going to add code reviewers to your project. So if I wanted to, I would go ahead and click, uh, and I'm going to remove this user. Uh, but that's, that's how simple it is to add another collaborator to your project. So we remove that. Okay, now uh, I'm, uh, that's step number one. Now I'm going to go back to doctor appointment. Okay, I'm going to click on the main branch. And this is the next step where we're creating a code review branch. I'm going to click the drop down here, and I'm going to make a branch that is Jones BR dash code review. And maybe even code review one because we'll likely have multiple code reviews this semester. And so I click, and what we should see, it's taking a moment there, and sure enough, we now have the branch Jones BR code review one. Okay, now I'm going to go into my virtual machine. And 
Uh, one thing I'm going to recommend is that when you do the code review, open a new Eclipse workspace. It's kind of like a new sandbox that you can work with. Uh, if you're already in Eclipse, one second please. There we go. If you're already in Eclipse, you can choose File and then switch Workspace and then Other. Uh, if you haven't opened Eclipse yet, you usually get this Workspace launcher that looks like this. So um, either way, you need to get to this box, whether you open Eclipse Fresh or whether you go to File and then switch Workspace. For this Workspace, what I might do is I might say C Users Win 7 and then I might say Dr. APT, APPT code review one. You don't have to do this in a new workspace, but it just helps to kind of separate uh, the code review from the main project that you're working on so you don't get too much clutter in Eclipse. It'll take just a moment because Eclipse, Eclipse needs to restart. While it's doing that, uh, I am going to run out to that doctor appointment and grab the clone URL. Okay. So I go to uh, github.uc.edu slash drappt. Uh, in your project, I will provide a spreadsheet with the, with the git URL that you want to access. So you'll just pull this off the spreadsheet. I click on this main project, and you see, just to verify here, uh, you see Jones BR Code Review 1. Uh, right down here, there is the clone URL. I'm going to click this little copy to clipboard, and you see it comes with, up with a confirmation that says copied. Now, my Eclipse hopefully is up at this point. There we go. Uh, let me maximize and dismiss the welcome screen. And now I'm going to choose File, and I'm going to choose Import. And from Import, I'm going to select Git, Projects from Git, and then Next. Clone URI, like so, and then Next. Okay, notice that it automatically looks in the clipboard and it sees that I have copied this URL into the clipboard. Uh, if it didn't, I would just go ahead and paste it in there. Uh, it does have my user ID and password, just your normal Bearcat ID, central login service password, uh, everything you'd expect. And that's why we're using github.uc.edu. Now to make sure I, I get the right branch, I'm only going to clone this code review branch because one thing I do not want to do is commit right back to their master uh, or their main. I want to only commit to my branch. And again, that's the value of GitHub is that you can have your own branch and you can work separately and you cannot affect the main branch, but then the group can merge in your changes if they wish. Everything here looks good. I'm going to choose next. We'll give it a moment to clone. Import existing project is fine, and next. Uh, everything here looks good, and then finish. And in just a minute, it will take all of that source code down and, and uh, make a project in it in Eclipse. And voila, you see doctor appointment, main Jones BR code review. At this point, it's uh, you see it's actually, it notices it's a Maven project, it notices it's a Java project, it's still building, uh, so it might take a moment to figure out how to build everything and where everything is. At this point, what I would recommend is go ahead and try and run the project so you can get an idea of what the project is doing. It's going to be much easier to do some code reviewing if you set breakpoints and you watch as you use the project. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, you know, just for the speed of this recording, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into com uh, doctor appointment UI. And again, I would want to look at each of these different classes and uh, maybe come up with some good thoughts. But let's go to Add Patient. Okay, we'll give it a moment. Now, one thing I, I might try to do, I see Manage Mean. It doesn't understand. It doesn't understand some of the imports. Um, I do see a POM. That's good. Uh, what I might do is I might just give this a little nudge to see if we can go ahead and get it to compile. I'll right-click and do a Maven. Uh, and then we'll do update project and then a maven install and again just for the purpose of this video I don't want to invest too much time in getting this project running I'm more focused on the code review but these are some initial steps I would take uh, to try to resolve what might be some obvious issues in this case it, it appears that it's missing the faces plugin so as soon as I do the maven update it's going to go see if it needs to pull down uh, any dependencies and uh, then if needed pull them down after doing the Maven update, I'll go ahead and do a run uh, and then a, uh, a Maven install from that. 
Okay. While that's running, though, while that's running in the background, I can still be looking at things that I want to code review. I know these red lines will go away once resolved. I'm not tremendously worried about them. But one thing that I do see is line number 23, private patient patient. And to be honest with you, this project in particular, uh, quite good. I had to search for a little while before I could find something to code review on it. So, um, you know, and maybe you have to do that. If you end up with a project where... Uh, you just can't find anything the code review on it, maybe because they haven't committed much. Look at the design document. Look at what they're doing. Do a bit of research on your own on what they might want to do in the future. Like, hey, I see you need to integrate with JSON. Here's a great library I saw on, on integrating with JSON. In any case, line 23 sticks out at me because we have a type called patient, which is excellent. That's exactly what we should do. Uh, but the variable name is also patient with an uppercase P. And generally, that's okay, except in Java, we don't tend to capitalize the first letter of a variable name. So that's something that I could fix fairly easily, uh, especially in Eclipse. I might right-click on this and say refactor, and then I'm going to say rename. Well, the nice thing about doing it like this in Eclipse is it will automatically update all references of this uh, to the new spelling. So patient, lowercase p, patient, um, patient service, I might also make that one lowercase p, but again, just for the point of this code review, I'll leave it like so. Okay, save, and now I'm going to right click, and I'm going to do a team, and then we're going to say commit. So we're committing the change that we just made, okay? Uh, and we see that it's saying, okay, I see that add patient has changed. Now, class path I'm going to deselect because class path is specific to my computer. But this add patient is what I'm going to recommend that we change. So I'll say uh, modified variable names to meet the Java coding standards. A good idea, especially if you're new to code reviewing or maybe even new to Java, if you're looking for ideas, look for these standards. I don't have a URL handy, but there are some widely accepted standards for Java programming. A quick internet search will turn those up. Okay, uh, I'm going to say commit and push. Give it a moment and look for a confirmation message. Okay, and the confirmation comes up. Uh, look closely here. Jones BR Code Review 1, push to Jones BR Code Review 1. Again, I emphasize, make sure you're pushing to your own code review branch, not the main or master branch. If you push to the main or the master, it's tricky to undo because uh, Git doesn't really like if you try to delete a midstream commit. So just be very careful when you select what you're cloning. Be sure that you are cloning your branch. And now we'll choose OK. Okay, because it's been cloned now and pushed, uh, if I go back to the original web page, we should see this branch. So let me just refresh this group's web page, okay? And take a look a minute ago, modified variable names to meet Java coding standards. So this is my separate code review branch, separate from the master. Now, what we're going to do, and this is basically the endpoint of your uh, of your code review is we're going to compare and pull request. This doesn't mean we're merging. It only means that we're taking a look at some differences. So what I'll say here is uh, my code review recommendations for this project, and I might put some notes in here uh, just to kind of help the group out and tell them what I was looking for. I looked at variable names and have some recommendations to help them align with Java coding standards. I might make some other comments like, hey, I see you're using a library here, uh, there's a better library to use, or anything like that. Any general comments can go here. And you see that we're doing a pull request between master and my code review. I hit send pull request. Okay, now you see it's open. And here's the cool part. Uh, this pull request can be automatically merged. So if the team likes my code review recommendations, all they have to do is hit this button, Merge Pull Request, and it will automatically merge this branch back into master, and they get the benefit of all those code review recommendations that I just made. 
Okay. But let's leave that up to the team. For now, I'm going to click on this modified variable names to meet the Java coding standards. And take a look. This is the neat part. One second. I need to move my screen over a little bit. Do you see this little plus here? Okay. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that the old version is in kind of a reddish color. The modified version is in a greenish color. And once again, because we used Eclipse's refactoring tool, we only had to change this one instance, and it changed everything throughout the entire class. So what I might do here is I might say, might do a quick web search here, and we'll just say Java Coding Standards. Something like that so I can have a reference. Okay. Uh, code conventions for the Java programming language. And certainly it's such a given convention. I honestly haven't looked at this page before, but I'll assure you that we'll find something about uh, uh, variable names. That was a good guess, but what the heck. Um, And you know, I I I I can dig a bit and find the exact uh, the exact note, but I could come in here uh, as a third party, one who's not a code reviewer, and I might say, okay, I'm going to add a comment, and I'm going to say, I agree with this change because it meets the Java coding uh, conventions. And then I might put a reference, something like that, and comment on this line. Now, the nice thing is this comment is meta information. It doesn't go into our source tree or anything like that. It's just a place where we can all have a conversation. So the group who owns this project can have a conversation in here. The code reviewer can have a conversation. I can have a conversation. And based on all of those conversations, we can decide whether to pull this or not. Now, I stress again that code reviewing is a learning opportunity for everyone. And so uh, for me, there we go. Uh, for me, when I do when I'm grading code reviews, I am going to be looking for things like accuracy, make sure that you're uh, make sure that you're you're saying making good recommendations, honestly. Uh, additionally, I am going to be making sure that, that you actually did the changes in the code review branch and didn't just put a comment in that said, hey, why don't you rename this to something else? Instead of making a comment that says, why don't you rename this variable? Go ahead and rename the variable, commit and push. Um, now, code reviews are meant to be helpful. And so uh, if, if I happen to assign you to, co to code review your friend's project, uh, what I wouldn't recommend, don't look at your friend's project and say, wow, this is really bad, but uh, gosh, I don't want Brandon to know this because I don't want my friend to get a bad grade. No, no, don't do that. That's the opposite thing you want to do. If you see something that's really bad, you go ahead, make the code review recommendation. Your friend will have an opportunity to implement that, possibly do a pull request and emerge, just like we just saw. And then by the time I grade it, uh, that will be fixed and that's something that wouldn't get deducted. So honestly, the more thorough your code review, the better favor you're doing to the group that you are reviewing. Now we are going to do two code reviews this semester, one after sprint one and one after sprint two. And uh, I will, part of the grade for the final project is, did you implement some code review recommendations? You don't have to implement all of them, and you certainly don't have to implement ones that you disagree with once we have this conversation on the pull request. But there will be plenty of code reviews of your application, and from that I'd expect that you would get several things that you can merge. So, this is how to do a code review in GitHub. Very efficient compared to the old way we used to do it. Very practical. Uh, and once you get the hang of it, frankly, very easy to do. So I look forward to seeing your reviews. Thank you.